The era of World War II was a really scary time for people around the world. Many countries were caught up in a rush to outsmart their enemies, not just on the battlefield but in various other areas too. Unfortunately, it seems that nothing drives discovery and innovation as much as the urgency of war. It's during times of danger and desperate need that humans tend to shine the brightest. Sometimes it's for the better, but sadly, more often than not, it's the other way around. The inventions that came out of Nazi Germany during the war had a significant impact on the world we live in today. Let's take a look at what all the excitement is about, from creating one of the toughest cars ever built to a sci-fi-like weapon that could make oceans boil. Methadone. The Nazis not only came up with a bunch of things we still use today, but did you know they also played a role in inventing drugs? One of the notable drugs developed under Nazi rule was methadone. It was created in 1939 by a big pharmaceutical company called IG Farben, which later got in trouble for using slave labor from Nazi concentration camps. At first, methadone wasn't off to a great start. It was slow to catch on, and some folks who tried it experienced nausea, overdoses, skin problems, and signs of toxicity. Despite these issues, the company decided to put profits first. Even though they knew methadone could be addictive and cause health problems, they advertised it as low risk for addiction. After the war, the US Department of Commerce took over IG Farben's developments. Surprisingly, by 1947, methadone was approved in the US as a painkiller. Soon, people started getting hooked on it, and the number of addicts rose, not just in the US, but even in the UK. During the same period, heroin use was on the rise, and it turned out to be a deadlier drug. To address the growing problems, the Rockefeller Foundation developed a treatment system. They started giving methadone to heroin addicts, not to cure them, but to prevent them from using heroin and spreading diseases. The first methadone clinic opened in New York City, and by 1998, there were 79,000 such clinics across the US. But the story doesn't end there. People began abusing methadone and the death toll started climbing. Just in 2001, the number of deaths from methadone overdose equaled the total from 1990 to 1999. Even those who didn't die faced various health risks. It turns out methadone wasn't a real solution to addiction. It was more like putting a small band-aid on a big wound. Night vision. Imagine a modern soldier decked out with top-notch weapons and cutting-edge gear, including communication devices and night vision goggles. Surprisingly, the Nazis were the ones who came up with night vision goggles over half a century ago. The idea of using darkness to outsmart the enemy has been around in warfare, but it was always a tricky task because, well, you couldn't see much. Early attempts with torches and flares had limitations, often illuminating both friend and foe, which defeated the purpose. To address this challenge, the Germans introduced night vision equipment into their army as early as 1939. By the end of World War II, they had around 50 Panther tanks equipped with night optics. One of the most intriguing applications of this technology was the Vampire, an active infrared device mounted on the Sturmgewehr 44 assault rifle. Even though it was an advanced piece of equipment, those who carried it were known as night hunters, giving it a cool factor. However, the vampire had its drawbacks. It was heavy, with the battery pack alone weighing 13 and a half kilograms, and it wasn't very sensitive to body heat like modern night vision devices. Despite these setbacks, it provided a futuristic advantage on the battlefield. Fortunately, this technology was introduced late in the war, during the ending stages. Only 310 vampire scopes were sent to the Eastern Front as late as 1945, and it wasn't enough to shift the tides of war. Guided missiles. Let's talk about a weapon from World War II that could have changed the course of history, but fortunately didn't, the V-2 rocket. This piece of technology was truly incredible and played a surprising role in enabling humanity to venture into space and even land on the moon if you believe we did. But let's not dive into that debate right now. Instead, let's explore the history of why the V-2 rocket was created in the first place. During the peak of World War II, the Allied forces were relentless in bombing German cities. 
This angered Hitler, prompting him to seek revenge with what he considered the ultimate weapon. Since 1936, the Germans had been developing a ballistic rocket under the guidance of Werner von Braun. It was named the Vengeance Weapon, and its second incarnation, known as the V-2, successfully launched in 1942. Two years later, it was used to bomb Paris and Great Britain with the ability to carry a payload of about 725 kilograms to a target as far as 320 kilometers, groundbreaking for its time. Fortunately for the world, the Germans didn't have enough time to perfect the technology, and the V-2 rockets were never very reliable. However, the most exciting part of the V-2 rocket's history came after the war. Both the United States and Russia seized a large number of these rockets to study their technology, laying the foundation for their space programs. The practical Americans brought in Werner von Braun and his team, offering them immunity on the condition that they continued working on rockets. Despite this, the Russians beat them to space. It wasn't until President John F. Kennedy invested a tremendous amount of money into the space program that the United States managed to surpass the Russians, at least in landing on the moon. Reflecting on it, if it weren't for Hitler's desire for vengeance, who knows when or if we would have dared to venture into space. The V-2 rocket became the first rocket to reach an altitude of 175 kilometers, marking a testament to how war can sometimes accelerate technology in ways we never imagined possible. The Sun Gun. When we think of popular sci-fi franchises like Star Wars, it's easy to believe that they introduced futuristic ideas to the masses. However, the truth is that plans for advanced weapons like the Death Star were actually conceived decades before. While it's unclear if George Lucas knew about the Nazi sun gun when creating Star Wars, it's an interesting piece of history. Back in Hitler's time, he had this wild idea to build a satellite that could attack enemies from Earth's orbit. It was called the sun gun. Picture this, a massive satellite, a mile wide, armed with an enormous mirror. The Nazis thought this mirror could potentially burn entire cities or even boil parts of the ocean. It's like the childhood memory of burning ants with a magnifying glass, but on a much larger scale. Despite sounding preposterous, there was some solid physics behind the plan. The mirror was supposed to focus separate light waves, creating a whole lot of heat energy. However, even though the science backed it up in the 1940s, there were no rockets that could transport all the parts into orbit, and assembling them in orbit was also impossible at the time, so these plans were a bit ahead of their time. Even if the Nazis somehow managed to achieve this ambitious idea, experts believe that much of the energy would have dissipated as it traveled the vast distance from Earth's orbit to the surface. Additionally, if they placed it in a lower orbit, the Earth's surface would be moving too fast, making it tricky to hit targets below. Thankfully, these challenges meant the Nazis couldn't pull off such a scheme in the 1940s. Looking back, it's a relief that these wild Nazi plans didn't work out. If they did, our world might be a very different place today. Thanks for watching the video and if you found it informative, please like and subscribe to Time Capsule for similar content. We look forward to sharing more knowledge with you in the future. Until then, take care.